President Emmanuel Macron's decision to call a snap election has plunged France into uncertainty, but it may prove to be the making of Mr. Jordan Bardella, Miss Marine Le Pen's 28-year-old selfie-loving political heir. Mr. Bardella, the butt of jokes on a satirical television show for his habit of offering to take selfies with people, would likely become Prime Minister if Miss Le Pen's national rally wins a legislative majority in July after Mr. Macron called a ballot following his party's bruising defeat in the June 9th European parliamentary election. Mr. Bardella, the president of the national rally, was instrumental in its record score in the vote, making the party appear more mainstream. By not carrying the family's name, he has helped Miss Lu Pen's push for legitimacy by putting even more distance between the party and its founder, her controversial father Mr. John Marie Lu Pen, known for his anti-Semitic views. But Miss Marta Lorimer, political science researcher and fellow at the London School of Economics LSE, says no one should be fooled by the moderation narrative. She said, Bardella has the exact same ideas as Lu Pen. It's just that he's not called Lu Pen and he's 28. The national rally hasn't moderated hugely in the last 10 years. There's nothing that would justify thinking of it as anything else than a radical right party. And Bardella is just a cleaner, nicer face, but he's not a moderate. For Miss Lu Pen and Mr. Bardella, the challenge will be to show that the economic and social discontent that carried the party in the European vote will also see them through at home. Already in 2022, Miss Lu Pen's party made significant strides by winning nearly 90 seats in the lower house of parliament to become the main opposition in the National Assembly. Inside the National Rally, or Rassemblement National in French RN, a Le Pen Bardella ticket is seen as a stronger bet than just Miss Le Pen's name, according to one of its strategists. The family brand still has cachet in former communist strongholds like the deindustrialized north of France. But without the Le Pen baggage, although he has dated Marine Le Pen's niece Norwin Olivier, Mr. Bardella is seen drawing conservatives who typically vote for the centre-right Republicans' party. Also, while RN is not usually popular with executives, polls suggest Mr. Bardella is helping it become slightly more acceptable for this category. His popularity among the young has been bolstered by a strong social media presence, including on the video app TikTok, where he has 1.4 million followers, compared with Mr. Macron's 4.5 million. Mr. Bardella has been grooming himself for the limelight, taking media training classes from a former journalist. Mr. Bardella, who dropped out of university to focus on politics, likes to burnish his credentials by pointing to his upbringing in the poor, rough and ethnically diverse Paris suburb of Saint-Saint-Denis. A recent portrait in Le Monde, however, highlighted how atypical he was for that neighbourhood. Although he grew up in a project and was raised by his divorced mother, Mr. Bardella, who is of Italian descent, was more privileged than his peers. Getting a smart car is a gift for his birthday and travelling to Miami with his father, according to an unidentified party official cited by the Daily. Mr. Bardella, who was named party president in November 2022, may be outgrowing his mentor, Miss Lu Pen, the 55-year-old, has ditched her plan to retire at 60. He touts his edge in addressing issues that young people care about, like climate change or artificial intelligence. And while Miss Lu Pen has distanced herself from comments about race, Mr. Bardella portrays immigration from Africa as a threat to French culture, alluding to the Great Replacement theory, a view popular with white nationalists around the world that says that they are at risk of being dislodged by people of colour. Although he can rally large crowds at party gatherings, Mr. Bardella often comes across as out of his depth and illatis in debates. He avoided a debate on key policies like the EU's Green Deal. 
letting an RN lawmaker to stand in for him. During a pre-election debate with Mr. Macron's 34-year-old Prime Minister, Gabriel Attal, Mr. Bardella appeared tense, struggling to explain his idea of creating a double border for migrants. Mr. Attal, presented as Macron's anti-Bardella campaigning weapon, baited Mr. Bardella on the bloc's electricity market reform. Mr. Bardella, who like his boss has expressed a preference for Donald Trump over Joe Biden as US president, is in favor of imposing more tariffs in sectors that are particularly vulnerable to foreign competition, including electric cars and agricultural goods. During the debate, he slammed the bloc's free trade agreements as well as the European Green Deal agenda. When Mr. Bardella met with business leaders in March, he noted that the economy needs trust, less red tape and fewer taxes. He also said that growth would help France reimburse its ballooning public debt, a Macron mantra, and that his party had no intention of leaving the EU. A proposal Ms. Le Pen ditched in 2019. To be sure, Mr. Bardella's chances of becoming Prime Minister are slim. In 2022, Ms. Le Pen was about 200 seats shy of a majority in the National Assembly. If her party wants to govern, it may have to build alliances, including with her niece Miss Marion Marichal, who joined the rival far-right party of TV pundit Eric Zemmer and traditional conservatives, some of whom are still repelled by the party's history of anti-Semitism and racism. Also, French national ballots typically do not echo EU votes, whose voting rules and dynamics are different. But if the party does cobble together a majority, Mr. Macron might be able to shine a light on its shortcomings, according to Tino analyst Antonio Borroso. Ultimately, Macron's goal might be to bring an RN victory forward in time to expose the party's lack of experience in government and make them confront politically painful decisions ahead of the 2027 presidential election. He said in a note late June 9. One of the trickiest exercises for Mr. Bardella, if he were to become Prime Minister, would be to negotiate the 2025 budget in the fall. Ms. Lu Pen has sought to shift the image of her party by promoting fiscal responsibility. She has slammed Mr. Macron for letting the French debt-to-GDP ratio climb and ceased the moment when France's debt was recently downgraded characterizing the government's management of public finances as catastrophic. At the same time, Mr. Bardella has laid out costly plans, including the creation of a sovereign fund to invest in energy and defense, higher pensions, lower energy prices and taxes, and boosting low wages by 10% while slashing corporate contributions. As an EU lawmaker, Mr. Bardella voted against a proposal to implement a windfall tax on the energy sectors and others. The economic agenda is a little bit all over the place, said the LSE's Ms. Lorimer. I would be curious to see what happens to it once they're actually in power and have to negotiate with the fact that the economy is, if not real, at least some kind of constraint on what they're able to do.